the line that really resonated with me was when he says, uh, you know, talked about uh, uh, trying to avoid the hate on the Internet, et cetera, et cetera. He said, if not firsthand, then through friends and loved ones who take to heart all that they read and hear. It didn't affect him, but it affected them. He says, I'm not a terribly sensitive person, so this stuff never really bothered me. That was until I realized that it actually had an impact on my career. Over my career, I would learn that everything people say behind these computers and smartphones actually shaped the perception of you. And so he feels, he basically was saying, I refuse to be a prisoner to this any longer because if all by somebody that doesn't know me somebody that doesn't sit here and watch the work that I put in to be who I am on that football field yet get to define who I am to the public at large essentially I'm a prisoner to this mm -hmm. and I just refuse to be that way any longer even at the age of 26 having made millions that is no longer acceptable to me but I also found myself while admiring his words and the way he articulated himself and how open and honest he was about it, I also found myself saddened for him. Mm -hmm. Because, Skip, we go through that. Mm -hmm. People try to define who we are and what we're about, what our character is, right. what we're made of. I'll be damned if I surrender to that. Thank you. Nobody yep. is allowing. I'm, nobody is getting me to wilt beneath that pressure. If anything, I'll break them before they ever think they're going to break Preach. me. That ain't happening. And so to be 26, to have all of this talent, to be a participant in a game you claim to love so much, and I have no reason to, believe, to, 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 to not believe what he mm -hmm. articulated, for him to succumb to that to some degree. I hold no disrespect towards him whatsoever. I'm just saddened that that had any kind of effect on his willingness to walk away from a game he claims to love. I feel like Richard was a Twitter victim. I think at the bottom line, he says, I'm not terribly sensitive. I, I'm not sure I can buy that. I think he was oversensitive, and I think he never quite recovered from the internet in his view defining him after two controversial developments in his his public life his his NFL life remember the conspiracy theory quote about the death of bin laden and and the the twin towers the 911 quote remember that yep okay his owner mr rooney publicly censured him for that that tweet and then remember his fumble early in the fourth quarter of that bad man's one Super Bowl victory. Yeah. Pittsburgh was on the move. I had picked Pittsburgh in that game, and I was very upset with young Mendenhall because he fumbled. And, and it looked like more of an unforced kind of error. It looked like one that could have been avoided. Right. And that fumble broke the momentum, swung the momentum in that game because they were on the move. I think they were at Green Bay's 33, and if they had scored, they would have gone ahead early in the fourth quarter. And from that moment forward, it was all Green Bay all the time. And he took a public beating. Mm -hmm. I think he only had, like, I think I looked last night, 89,000 Twitter followers, which is yeah. not bad, but not, not enormous. Yeah. But, but he was taking it to heart. This is a deep-thinking young man who has a great mind, not a good mind, he has a great mind. And he wants to pursue a career as a writer and a world traveler, and God bless. But remember, the NFL helped put him on the map. It helped, it helped him make some early money he could not have made in any other line of work, I don't think. I mean, this is pretty quick money. Now, you give up a lot body-wise, as he points out. But he talked about living a private life in the public eye, and how he, just could, he, he finally couldn't live with that. I appreciate that. I hope he doesn't have regrets a year from today when he thinks, gee, I could have played It always come back. four sure. more years. Maybe, maybe. But usually when you take a whole year off, it's hard to kind of get back into the flow of it. Well, uh, what I would say to you is this. You say he's a Twitter victim. Mm -hmm. The reason why I'm, I somewhat disagree with that is because I don't, this doesn't come across to me as just about Twitter. It comes across to me as a disgust and a frustration with the NFL's willingness to succumb, succumb to, to Twitter. If you work in an industry 
that allows you to be a prisoner to it because it influences the thinking of coaches, of executives, etc. Then that's where the prisoner comes in because if it doesn't affect them, then your stats and all of that stuff is not only what me- what defines who you are and what defines your value. And by that, what I mean when NFL, I'm talking about fantasy football and all sure. of that stuff. What I'm saying to you is that this is not some guy that's just complaining about criticism he takes in social media or the attention that he gets in social media. This is a guy that's lamenting the impact it's had on an industry he apparently fantasized about being a participant in ultimately reached that goal and found that it's not what it once was and it's not what it's cracked up to be.